thank you. Um, so yes, just to build a, a bit on uh, two things, huh? to build on what uh, Sanjay uh, was saying. Uh, first of all, um, uh, the three flow, huh? when we speak about the three flow, product, money, and information, the one which is uh, regularly undervalued, underinvested in, uh, under uh, focused on, uh, you understand what I mean? I think the one which is really undervalued is uh, the flow of information, unfortunately. And it is the most important one. If you don't have an effective flow on the, of information, the other ones uh, that you will obviously look at, which are uh, the flow of product and the flow of money, uh, will uh, be, uh, of course, uh, very negatively affected by the lack of attention which is uh, given to the flow of information. So I can only insist everywhere you go in the new system, every time you approach a reorganization, every time you move within the system of the supply chain or the health system, or if you are allocated to a new system, a new organization in a different country or somewhere else, do this diagram that uh, Sanjay has, uh, that you've worked on right now, uh, which is a bit uh, of an elaborated uh, spaghetti uh, diagram, uh, but do it with those three flow, money, product, and uh, information. So that's the third point. Never underestimate uh, the importance of the uh, information flow. It is, in fact, the most important of those three ones. And then the second point, is uh, information. Of course, there is an information flow, but there are also within this flow information events. And it's very important uh, that uh, when you approach uh, a system like that, you understand exactly what are the key events in the flow. When those key events happen and which information will be shared as those key events. So there are uh, those events and uh, the quantification process uh, is also made of uh, key events where information is shared among uh, stakeholders. So that's why Sanjay was saying, you know, you need, you need to identify uh, where the forecasting is happening. You need, you need to identify where the specifications for the product are uh, defined. You need to identify who is deciding on prioritization, you know, who is doing, for instance, where there is a need of allocation of product, prioritization of product, sometimes due to, uh, to budget constraints. It can be done uh, due to emergencies arising somewhere, due to priority areas that need to be served. All those kind of things, you know, those are information and decisions which are made. And indeed, you need to identify where uh, they happen. So this flow of information is key. And when you engage in the, in the quantification process, you can see here we've shown the, the four step uh, of the overall um, quantification process. And we are going to focus today on step two. Uh, which is the forecasting. But before we can move to forecasting, there is a lot of information that needs to be done. Indeed, there is, uh, you know, the methodology which is going to be used for uh, the quantification, um, which kind of forecast method we'll use, which kind of data we will have access to, which actor is going to be involved into uh, the quantification process, uh, where are uh, the various uh, elements uh, of forecasting which is going to happen? Is there a central decision which is made at one point for uh, allocating uh, uh, resources, for allocating product, for allocating prioritizing uh, the delivery? Do we, you know, do we do, for instance, split, split delivery? All those kind of things need to be discussed uh, before we start. I, think I really insist on that because the effective communication, the effective uh, uh, preparation of the methodology, understanding the context, understanding the area, making sure that all actors are involved is what can make a supply chain successful or painful. Uh, and uh, when we are involved in supply chain, the last thing we want is uh, to be always behind, trying to catch up on information, trying to catch up on product need, trying to catch up on delivery. 
So step one is really this element of understanding the context and understanding, defining the methodology and uh, making sure that we know where we can access the relevant data. Step two is going to be the forecast itself, you know, based on the object objective, based on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the information we have, how do we forecast uh, the future needs? Then step three will be about the supply plan. Okay, the supply plan is really once we look at uh, all the information we have, then we uh, um, match the need with uh, the resources available. That's where you're going to look at your budget. That's where you're going to look at the lead times. That's where you're going to look at uh, the uh, time for tendering. What are your constraints for uh, for um, delivery with uh, the uh, portfolio of suppliers you have? How can you optimize, optimize uh, product availability, product storage, and uh, product uh, you know the, the cost immobilization? So this is really uh, the step three which is also a very important uh, planning uh, step. And then step four is uh, the regular monitoring. Uh, we really advocate for uh, iterative review of the plans. Iterative review, meaning that you will plan regularly within the year. Uh, it can be monthly, it can be quarterly, it can be uh you know by annually by annually but usually you know monthly or quarterly are, are better uh you plan iterative review to ensure that uh the forecast you had uh initiated at the beginning of the cycle are still valid that maybe there is a need to adapt them maybe there is a need to review them so uh you know this is really this iterative review with uh, all the actors who have been involved to ensure you optimize uh, your supply chain and you communicate uh, on the progresses which are uh, taking place. So moving more specifically now to uh, the uh, forecasting. So I think you all know uh, what is uh, forecasting. Uh, we use uh, forecast a lot, uh, for instance, when we speak about the weather, you know, the weather forecast. Uh, it's basically, uh, you know, predicting future events. What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen in one month, in six months, in one year? And uh, it's a difficult job. Uh, that's why really uh, the forecasting element is very uh, complicated. Uh, and when we are speaking about supply chain management, you can see some element, you know, like predicting demand, uh, you know, how many products are going to be needed in which area, which supply will we need, uh, which supply flow will we need to meet uh, that demand, what's going to be the pricing, what budget can we allocate to this, and then making cho making choices to improve, you know, the planning, the, the, the seasonal demand, um, the user satisfaction, user satisfaction, safety stock, inventory, stockouts, shipping and pricing, you know, avoiding to immobilize uh, too much uh, budget, too much funds in a uh, high level of storage. So it's really about uh, making the most of the budget we have to meet, or at least of the resources we have to meet uh, the, uh, the demand. Forecasting is very difficult. Forecasting is very difficult. It's one of the most, uh, let's say, more than difficult, it's very risky. It's very easy uh, to make a wrong forecast, you know, and, uh, and, and so that's why what's going to happen usually when you work on uh, in forecasting, you know, you will see uh, that uh, people who are in charge of forecasting will try to delay as much as they can the availability of the forecast. So if you are in charge of supply chain, what you need, what you need is to have quantities given to you as soon as possible. Because once you have the quantities, then you can start to plan, you can move to step three. Unless you have those quantities, you can't move to step three. And very often, those quantities are not coming from the supply chain experts. They are given to you by, it can be uh, you know, the national authority, it can be uh, uh, the local structure, it depends really on the system where you're working in. So you are depending on them to start 
your uh, supply plans. And of course, the more they delay on this side, the more it will be delayed at the end because the lead times cannot be compressed. So it's very important when you are in charge of developing the supply plans and your responsibility, what you're going to be judged on is product availability in terms of communication and in terms of information flow, you need to be able to inform those who are going to give you the forecast about how long it's going to take once they're giving you the quantities for them to have those quantities in stock. I insist again on that because this is a key element of the success of the supply chain. If you don't, as a supply chain manager, as a supply chain officer, if you don't give those in charge of forecasting who are at the health center, who can be at marketing, if you don't give them the clear lead time, they will think they can delay the forecast as much as they want. And they will give you the quantities one month later, two months later. And so the product will come one month later, two months later. But at that time, they will put the blame on you for those two months delay. They will not say, oh, of course, there is no problem. You've delayed by two months. No problem, because we know we have delayed by two months when we wanted to give you the forecast. So this is part also of the mechanism of communication, information flow, and when, what, what I mentioned as information events. You need to make sure that we are, you have clear events in a month, in a quarter, but in a month is better, where you exchange with your counterpart who are all involved in uh, the product definition, in the product specification, and in the pro product forecasting, so that you can clearly exchange with them. So uh, again, sorry for insisting a lot on that, but it's an important uh, element of success of the supply chain, communication and information. So once again, uh, we have that in supply chain, but, uh, you know, again, as we said, it's uh, really about predicting the quantities uh, and how it's going to be uh, delivered at a certain time. And so there are different methods of uh, using and uh, different information to make uh, um, you know, e efficient and, and clear forecast. Um, again, if we don't have clear uh, forecast, uh, the impact can be dramatic huh, because you can have uh, not enough product to treat uh, the, uh, the problem. This is shortage, uh, the disease, or you can have too many product, excess inventory, which is uh, going to have uh, you know, a, a financial impact, which can uh, be at the expense of other uh, diseases. So we are going to be looking at uh, various methods right now of forecasting. Those methods, in fact, uh, depends a bit on the kind of data uh, which, is, uh, which is available uh, for you. Uh, so in some cases, uh, you may have access to uh, uh, morbidity data, you may have access to uh, population uh, data, you may have access to consumption data from previous years. So according to the information that you have, you will have uh, to make a choice. So um, according to you, if you look at them, uh, let's do this quick quiz. What are the uh, data that can be uh, used uh, to make forecast? You send the, the... Um, yeah, Gilles, I'm trying to launch the poll. Something went wrong. Okay, we are launching a, a quick, uh, a quick quiz. Um, it's just really, really for you to 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 see. Uh, so you have them here, written here, service, surveillance, consumption. Yeah, you can answer in the, in the there is a quiz, you will have a box to answer, which is uh, going to be dedicated to, to you. I see people starting to answer on the, on the, on the chat, uh, but that won't be that helpful because. Uh, Sorry, uh, I, I have to log in again, just to give me a sec, uh, but the, okay, the meeting will not be stopped, don't worry. We are trying to handle the technical uh, side of things. Perhaps uh, while we are waiting for the for the quiz, um, 
is there uh, in Nigeria uh, who is in charge of the of the um, of the forecasting? You know, if you need to have information about product specification and uh, product quantities, to which uh, organization are you going to 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 look towards? Okay, the poll is on the screen now. Okay, please answer the poll. Answer the question. I see people have already put some uh, some information on the floor. Please don't hesitate uh, on the on the. If you can take the mic the, the microphone, please, uh, or if you want to put it on the chat, um, maybe it can be uh, something that sends us back to the exercise that you are doing with Sanjay. Uh, who is the key? Uh, who is the key uh, actor in Nigeria to define product specification and um, forecast? Quantities. Okay, uh, just a couple of, uh, just maybe one more minute if you can quickly answer the poll uh, on the poll widget rather than the chat so that we can have a fully compiled answer. 23 people have responded, maybe a few more if you can very quickly. Okay, maybe let's move on. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, the results is on the screen. The results are on the screen? I can't see them. You can't? No. Okay, let me try again. Is it oh. Thank you. I see my results. I don't see everybody's results, but it's okay. Okay, maybe I can. Uh, so, majority, so all of them, uh, they have chosen consumption data, which is correct. Uh, the two other correct answers are services data and surveillance data. Surveillance data, not a lot of you have uh, gotten right uh, because you have also chosen adverse events data and household data. So now, Household data and adverse events data, I mean, they are, they are relevant data for uh, supply chain or health systems, but they may not always be very useful for product, uh, product forecasting. The three most uh, useful data sets that you can use are consumption, services, and surveillance, and we will uh, talk more about them in the next slide. So we'll back to you. Yes, there is also uh, in one of the exercises. I think I'm, I'm I'm not sure we're doing it online today, but in one of the exercises we're also using uh, demographic uh, data. Yes. Uh, I don't have access to the slide. Uh, Sandra. Yeah. So uh, okay, you don't have. Sorry. Uh, okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So yes, we're going to move to, to an exercise now. Uh, it's a quick exercise. Um, we're using a, a functional uh, scenario. We imagine a, a district, District X. We have not been very creative for the name, huh? sorry. So District X, X is uh, of population of 200,000 uh, people. The population growth rate is 3.2 percent per year. There is a number of five sub districts. The products are fully imported, and the key supply chain stakeholder uh, is uh, the national uh, supply organization under the Ministry of Health. Um, so that's the overall uh, information for this uh, fictional uh, scenario. So uh, during the exercise, we're going to be using uh, three uh, different uh, data sets. We're going to use uh, consumption data. We're going to use services uh, data. And we are going to be using uh, morbidity uh, data. So the consumption data, it's uh, the, actual, the actual product consumption, 
uh, which is uh, you know happening either at a facility level at hospital or at a district level uh, or at a sub district uh, level and uh, those information can be taken uh, from one period to the other one and uh, for instance uh, uh, using it to forecast for the uh, next one, the example which is given here is a vaccine. Uh, services data is the number of patients, uh, a number of patients who, uh, who have been uh, participating uh, in, uh, you know, uh, who have been consulting at facilities or who accessed uh, to service. So number of patients or consumer uh, who went to, a health, uh, to access health services they can also be used to uh, create forecasts for the next uh, period. And then morbidity data, uh, as Sanjay said, morbidity data can also be called uh, surveillance uh, data. They are more directly linked to uh, the magnitude of a disease or uh, a sickness uh, and uh, its spread uh, during uh, within the uh, population. So all those information are going to be used in the next uh, example, the next exercises. Yeah, there is a hand raised, probably uh, there's a quick question. Okay, I haven't seen the, please. Uh, if somebody has raised a hand, uh, please go ahead. Um, yeah, Zakaria, please. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Um, um, my question will be referring to the previous slide, please. Can we just go back? Yeah. Okay, about the consumption data, I think, on the last statement, we will need to add something so that it will define it more specifically. Consumption data must correspond with the number of patients seen by the facility that uses that particular product in question. Because if the health facility sees patients that do not use that particular product, the number of patients that have been seen cannot be used to forecast, you know, for that particular commodity. That's just my addition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Zakayao. Uh, indeed, I think you, you're right. Uh, we need to be uh, specific and precise. So we'll, uh, we'll amend uh, the slide. Thank you. But I think just one, just one point uh, to, to finish on it. What is important in the consumption data is that uh, the number of patients comes as a, uh, let's say, as a control, perhaps for the consumption uh, data. Um, that's where, you know, if you, if you, because if you only look at the number of patients seen by the facility, then you may move to the service uh, data rather than the consumption. Uh, but uh, that doesn't, I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not uh, trying to challenge what you what you said here. I mean, I think your, your remark is 100% pertinent, but just to insist on the fact that patient in this uh, approach with consumption data, is uh, really as a, as a control uh, for uh, the consumption uh, information. Yes, Zakaria, you, you have raised your hand again or? Oh, okay. Um, so in this uh, first exercise, we are going to be used consumption uh, data. We will use the average monthly consumption. Uh, we will use this to uh, predict uh, the future event and future uh, consumption uh, data for a period. So um, just to finish on the, uh, on the presentation of the case, uh, in this particular exercise, uh, we are going to be looking at uh, ciprofloxacin. Donc, ciprofloxacin uh, in tablet of 500 milligrams. Uh, the pack, uh, the secondary pack, are, uh, it's a box of 10 times 10 secondary packs. Um, it's used to treat uh, di typhoid, diarrhea, infection of lower respiratory tract. Uh, essential medicine, it's within essential medicine program. Uh, there is no new target for the next uh, season. So we take the information of previous season and we uh, project it as the same information for the next uh, season. And it's funded by the Ministry of Health through the Drug Revolving Fund. 
and the forecast period, the season is uh, 12 months. So here you have the, the tool, huh? it's a forecast one, uh, which is here. Uh, you have access uh, to, uh, to this Excel uh, chart. Um, I, I, I think, I mean, we can, we can uh, look at it, you know, you put all the data you have. Here. Sorry, uh, Sanjay, can you go back up to the, to the first line? So in the example that you see at the, at the top of the, of, the, of, the, of the sheet, you will see all the information, you know, which are mentioned already on the, on, on the slides, you know, all the product name, the packaging, the treatment, the information, all those kind of things. So you can find everything here. We remind you uh, that the location, uh, you know, information about the location and particularly the growth rates, the 3.2% uh, growth rates, which may have uh, an uh, indication uh, to be taken into consideration. And here you have the consumption data for the past period from January 17, okay, going down to uh, December 18. Those are all uh, the consumption which have uh, taken place. Number of tablets, you know, we are not talking about number of uh, packs, number of tablets. So here, pack, uh, dispensed. So if you look at the pack dispense, uh, you'll have to uh, divide that by uh, 100. Uh, these are the 10 times 10 uh, information that you can see here, 10 times 10 secondary pack. This is really, you know, basic uh, math. So you have here 100. So we divide this number by 100. We get uh, the uh, number which are here. We lower it and you have a number of pack uh, which have been used for the past two years, which is uh, the, the uh, average, the sum, sorry, the sum of all the consumption. So that's a, a total of 2,138 um, pack. Now uh, we're using, since we're using the average monthly consumption, uh, we are going to use uh, a formula uh, which is uh, dividing, you know, the number of quantity by the number of period, number of months, uh, because we are in a monthly consumption. If, if we are using average daily consumption, we would divide by uh, 670, uh, which is the number of days for two years. But since we've made the calculation over two years, we are going to, div to divide by 24, which is the number of months. I think it's really simple uh, mathematics. I'm sure you, 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 you are all getting that uh, very easily. And the number of average monthly consumption is uh, 89. Now, the only specific adjustment we are making to this 89 is we take into consideration uh, the growth of the population. So that's the 3.2% uh, that we mentioned at the beginning, the 3.2% 3, 3 which are here, you, uh, we increase uh, the uh, number by 3.2% uh, and that gives us uh, 92 uh, as um, the uh, 92 is uh, the uh, average monthly uh, consumption. If we make a forecast for 12 months, so we decide to make Sorry, a forecast. Can you, can you put the formula back on our adjusted AMC? Can you put back, uh, Sanjay, can you put back the formula? You can see the formula up here. You know? Okay. Uh, we insist that when you do the formula here, be very careful. I know you know that, but I just want to insist on it. Is the brackets. You know, the brackets are very important. Uh, to ensure that uh, the 3.2 percent are only allocated to, um, I mean, once to the P22, yeah, once to the to the, to the quantity. I think you get 92. So we do we do the forecast for uh, 12 months. Uh, 12 months. This is 92 times 12. Uh, simple multiplication, and you get uh, the forecast for 12 months. So. Voilà, you have this. Sorry, sir. Excuse me, sir. How did you get 92, sir, for the adjusted AMC? Thank you. 92, 92 is really the, we add uh, 
to the to get 89 to get 89 we only take uh, the average consumption from the past two years we add everything up and we divide it by 24 number of months so we get uh, the basic average consumption for the past two years now because we know because we know that the growth of the population is 3.2 percent we assume that the growth of the disease will be similar than the growth of the population so this is an assumption which is made and this assumption is that the 3.2 percent will also be affected by the disease in the same way as the rest of the population has uh, been affected in the past two years so we apply the growth of 3.2 percent to uh, the 89 uh, monthly average of the past two years and we AMC, the formula for amc i didn't see it okay So in, if you look at the, at the files which have been sent to you by Priyanka uh, earlier, uh, I think it was today or yesterday, uh, if you look at the files, all the, 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 the formula are visible. So for instance, uh, Sanjay, maybe if you click on uh, one of the cells where the formula are available, you can see all the formula which are then uh, showing as soon as you click on the cell, the formula is showing in, uh, thank you, Sanjay, in the box uh, where you can enter data. So, so that's uh, uh, so the, the formula that also mentioned here. So if you see here, this is the formula of AMC, sum of quantities divided by number of period. Also here, sum divided by period. So it's all aligned in that way, you know. Uh, also, one more, uh, just in, uh, in addition to what Gilles said, so this is just uh, an assumption which has been taken in step number five. So this is an assumption to just say that, you know, there, there is a probability that, uh, you know, more people will get, uh, more people will need this medicine in the next period. Now, assumptions can be anything. So this is a hypothetical scenario where the growth rate has been used as the assumption. Uh, there can be different types of assumptions in your forecasting exercise. However, those assumptions, they must be, uh, you know, identified and written down properly so that in case you need to change your assumption, you can go back and change that. So, for example, if in this assumption, instead of 3.2%, so let's say uh, an epidemiologist or, you know, a, a public health specialist came and said, no, but, uh, you know, uh, this uh, this medicine will not be required uh, at the same rate of population growth, but maybe at 2%, for example. So we can just simply go and change it, change the formula by 2% and you will see a change in the number. Okay. So this is a hypothetical assumption, uh, which generally we do in any forecasting exercise. The assumptions can be multiple as well. There can be more than one assumption as well. So all those assumptions must be written down uh, and then uh, factored in in the calculations that you are doing. In this case, we have added 3.2% to the average monthly consumption of the previous period. Okay, so that's how we got 92. Zeev, back to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. Um, okay, I think this exercise is, uh, is over huh, with uh, the average monthly consumption. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a simple, uh, it's a simple tool. Yeah, um, well, Excel is very powerful. Huh? Uh, I know I'm sure a lot of you are, are quite uh, fluent uh, with Excel. Uh, if I can encourage you, uh, is uh, any 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 course uh, any course you could take uh, on Excel uh, that can uh, strengthen your ability to use formula. And particularly, particularly, if I can insist on uh, being able to use pivot table, when you start to work in supply chain, where you will have to manage information, data, stock availability, stock uh, consumption, um, you know, forecast, demand, you will have to manage a lot, a lot of information. Um, pivot table are very, very useful. 
people, there is a huge difference between a, a supply chain manager who can use pivot table and a supply chain manager who cannot use pivot table. It's a very, very big difference. So really, if I can give you one uh, advice or so, when we are doing, when we are working on this, but also for stock, for stock management, for uh, deliveries, uh, for anything, uh, be trained on uh, Excel formula and be trained on the use of pivot table within uh, Excel. So when do we use uh, average monthly consumption? Well, you know that's for kind of a simple, uh, simple uh, element uh, like forecasting community needs at a health facility. Uh, so maybe when there are many uh, information, many complex information, that's going to be that's not going to be the the most favorable uh, method. Uh, when we want to calculate months of stocks available at a facility or a warehouse, so for instance, you want to know how many months of consumption you have in your stock and how much you're going to be able to use uh, to cover the needs. Then you can use indeed, uh, you know, this uh, AMC uh, calculation, average uh, monthly uh, consumption, and also this is useful when consumption is mostly steady. You know, for instance, like some essential medicine, you know, the consumption will be regular from year to year. It doesn't mean you do, you cannot have a seasonal peak or something like. That. You can have some seasonality, but year after year, you know that the consumption for such or such project will be the same. So it is easy for you to forecast from one year to uh, the other one. We're gonna move now. Um, we'll take question and answer uh, later on. So if you are, if you will have more opportunity to do. Let's move on with uh, exercise uh, two directly. Um, then we'll do a third exercise with Sanjay and then we'll take question and answer. So please, if you have specific question and answer, let's take them uh, as, uh, write them write them down and we'll take them uh, down. Um, now we are gonna work on uh, medroxy progesterone injection acetate, 150 uh, milligram. Uh, again here, it's put in bracket, but it's important. We're working in the case of a product substitution. Okay. Uh, the, we can see down uh, the program target. Uh, if you see a bit down program target, it's uh, that it's proven that uh, the medroxy progesterone injection is more effective, you know, that uh, traditional oral contraceptives uh, for uh, women. So uh, the directive from the uh, Ministry of Health is to try to transition 50 to 60% of women who are currently on oral contraceptive to uh, the new uh, contraception uh, methodology with uh, injection. So here we have a specific case where indeed you have a product uh, substitution uh, to a new product, which is uh, this uh, medroxy progesterone injection uh, acetate, 150 milligrams. So the pack size is uh, 24 uh, pre-filled uh, syringes in each pack. The indication is contraception. Uh, it takes one injection every three months, uh, one injection every three months, so every 12 to 13 weeks. It's a program of family planning. It's uh, sponsored and funded by the MOH and the UNFPA, uh, the Family Planning uh, Agency, uh, no, UN Fund for uh, People and, um, sorry, I don't get all the acronym of UNFPA. Um, family planning. It's family it's planning? Are you sure it's uh, UN Fund for uh, People and, no? Okay, let me yeah, family. family planning. Okay, if you say, I trust you, but I will check after the session. It's called Population Fund. Yeah. Population Fund. Population Fund, yeah. It's name. Uh, a forecast period, uh, 12 months. So here we are going to use service data. It's family planning. Okay, we'll, we'll check. 
uh, we'll use uh, service uh, service data. Um, one thing before uh, moving on, we'll use the uh, copper year protection. So what is a couple year uh, protection when we work on uh, contraception? Uh, uh, there is uh, this um, factor, uh, this uh, this data, which is uh, which has to be taken into consideration, and that's the couple year protection. And it depends. It's the number of the quantity of product which is needed to protect a couple for a full year. So depending on the method uh, which is going to be used uh, for contraception, uh, you'll have uh, different, uh, different products and different quantities which is going to be used. Um, so for instance, uh, if you look at pills, uh, we consider that uh, a woman as uh, 15 uh, cycle in a year. So uh, the couple year uh, protection for a woman, for a couple, sorry, uh, couple year protection for a couple which is using uh, oral uh, contraception uh, for, um, for contraception is going to be uh, 15, uh, 15, uh, pill cycle, so 15 uh, tablets of uh, pills. Uh, for condom, uh, uh, don't ask me why, uh, but the number uh, which has been uh, decided to be uh, a couple year uh, protection is 120 uh, condom. This works for male or female uh, condom. I think the studies show that with 120 condom, uh, it should be enough to cover uh, a couple for one year. So maybe that's a couple who is already quite advanced in terms of relationship, not in the first year. Um, sorry for that. What is uh, the couple year uh, protection factor for medroxyprogesterone acetate injection? So as we've seen uh, in the previous slide, we need to have uh, one injection every 12 to uh, 13 weeks, okay? Every three months, uh, we need to have one injection. So please use the chat box to tell us uh, what is a couple year uh, protection factor uh, for a couple, yeah with uh, using uh, metoxyprogesterone acetate injection. Three months, every three months, four. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ibir Sam. Thank you, Zagaria, four. Thank you, Dr. Samuel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, OK. Let's go back. If somebody is lost, let's go back. Now, don't we can we can keep here? No, okay. Just to say, I mean, sorry. Uh, maybe the French accent is not uh, helping. Maybe the French accent is not helping. But I see that a lot of people. Um, maybe uh, Mr. Uh, Ibir Sam, and since you're the first one who have replied to four, can you can you tell us how you've how you've come up to four, please? Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you. Yeah. From from the question you asked, to get a couple of year protection, we meant to understand that the, the contraceptive injection is to be taken every three months. That means every three months, that's first time, first, every three months in four years is uh, in three months. Every three months in one year is four, is four times. That means the injection is supposed to be taken every quarter and each quarter is three months, three times, four, that's 12. That's how I came up with my answer. Thank you. That's exactly it. Three times four, three times four will give you 12 months. So uh, with four injection, uh, you're covered. We will we, we have, we have, we have a, a question and answer um, uh, session uh, just after. So please, uh, Mr. Um, Onyerikam, 
please, you know, if, uh, if that's not clear yet, uh, keep it down and uh, we'll get back to that. Ah, okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Van der Heeken. So here again, if you go on forecast two, uh, you'll get uh, the same uh, information of the scenario, which are at the top of uh, the sheet number two, and you'll be able to access those information. And here uh, we are going uh, to be uh, using uh, um, the uh, different set of uh, data, uh, which is now the uh, service uh, service data. So what we're looking at is first the data which are available for us. And what are the data is the number of women who attended clinics for oral contraceptive. So here you have a list of number. It's for one year from January 17 to December 17. Uh, you have this number of person who has uh, attended uh, the uh, clinic. So since we don't have consumption data, we only have a number of persons who have uh, attended uh, the, uh, the clinics. We we'll use these numbers to know that those people are those who are under oral uh, contraceptive. The target of the, uh, so the, can you tell us what is the total number? Total number of people who have used this is, uh, if you look at the total number here, uh, what is the total number, Sanjay? Sorry, All right, some, we put the sum here. So we have a, a total number of uh, 25, 116 uh, consultation. Uh, those are consultation services which have been given. It's not a number of uh, individual, different individual. In this number, you may have two people who have uh, come uh, for uh, oral. Uh, uh Zil, for this scenario, we are meaning the number of women here. Okay. Than, uh, so it's okay. number one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry it can me. be more sessions. Uh, in this particular scenario, we are saying, based on data which has been collected, these many women attended. Okay, so this is women, women, women over, over there. So 25,116. Uh, um, the, the target for the project, you know, the target for it is to move 60%. Uh, 50 to 60 percent of persons who are under oral contraception to uh, injectable uh, uh, contraception. So we are moving uh, for that, and th therefore we'll have to, to deduce what is the number of targets. So here we have a number of, of uh, women who are at reproductive, reproductive age in uh, the uh, district is 60,000, okay. Number of women who have visited uh, the facilities for uh, contraception is 25,000, uh, okay. The program target is 60% 60, 60 of existing women who are under oral contraceptive, okay. So this is 60% of 25,000 uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the consumption, the, the service, number of women who's, who've been ser services. So here, uh, Sanjay is using the roundup uh, formula uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have, um, we, we only have a full number. I don't know how you say that in English. Um, So 60% of, uh, it's 15, uh, 15 So the, the roundup uh, formula, which has been used here by uh, Sanjay, is to ensure you don't have uh, 15,069.2, uh, which will not be very helpful when you are counting people. So now we have 15,070. This is 60% of the people who have uh, um, consulted in a health center. 
we we make an assumption again here we make an assumption and as, as sanjay said what is very important when you make assumption is to write them down so that when you are going to go back to your file or if somebody comes in your file we know what the assumption was and here we make that because there is an advocacy linked to the program you know there will be 10 percent new user based on advocacy so those 10 percent new user we take them on the 60,000 who have been used Okay, we've added, uh, we, we make the assumption. We are not forced to make this assumption. You know, we could have said, well, no need to make an assumption like that. We just take the, the 10%, the 60% of existing women who have consulted and we move them. But because we know we are going to make advocacy, because we know there will be posters, there will be uh, health workers who are going to, to go in communities and to make advocacy for this change to uh, injected. Uh, contraception, then we know that maybe there will be uh, changes and more people who are going to join. So this is an assumption uh, we're making. And this assumption is 6,000 people on top of those who are already using contraception. So in the district, we have 60% of the existing person who have consulted for oral treatment, plus 10% of the 60,000 that make us a total of 21,070 uh, user. So because we have a couple year protection of four, uh, we, we include now the couple year protection, which is four, and that's going to give us uh, the number of uh, injection which are going to be required, which is the total number of user times four, Time uh, well, divided by the, well, it's, we are going to need a total of 84,000 injection. We know that uh, there is uh, how many injection again in, 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 a, in, a, in a 24, well, 24 pre filled syringes. So we divide by 24 and we get 3,512 pack. We could have added an assumption uh, with. Uh, the population growth. We could have added the assumption of the 3.2% population growth and taking that into consideration and adding that to the 10%. This would have just made the thing, you know, one more assumption. It would not have overcomplicated the thing, but let's take it like that for the moment. And that's enough <laughs> in terms of assumption. I hope this is, uh, this is clear. Uh, it's a bit more complicated. Ah, uh, okay. Let me take. Sorry. Um, uh, yes. Please, if you have. Uh, can yeah, I? Please. Can I speak? Can I speak now? Please, therefore, okay. Speak now. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. The the program target is sixty percent of the existing women in the community in the district, and the existing women in the district is sixty thousand. So the target is to get 60% of that 60,000 to be moved to the program, to the, to the injectables. Not 60% of all those who have already, who are already on the injectables. That's the calculation you did is with the 60% of those already on the, who have already moved. But the target is to get 60% of the women in the district. And the women in the district is 600, not a, a, a big, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, no, thank you. No, 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 no. Uh, I have please. a contrary view. Please, Hello? Hello? Yeah, I think from, please, can you scroll up to the 50 to 60%? Already, uh, already, there, there are women on, on contraceptive in this facility. Now, we are introducing this new aura, this new injectable. So what this question is saying is that we need with advocacy, we need 60% of women that are already on contraceptive to this regimen because the, the 60,000 women in the district, they are not, they are women of reproductive age, not women on oral contraceptive. So the question said that we should, with advocacy, we should convince people that are already on oral contraceptive, 60% of them to this new Regiment that we are trying to introduce to help us in the forecast the quantity of commodities to be imported. Thank you.
Thank you, Ibir. I think that's, uh, that's uh, very clear. Zakariao, you have raised your hand. Please go ahead, Zakariao. Yes, I just want to stress the contribution of uh, the person that I just spoke. The target is to move 60% of women on oral contraceptives, not the population of women in the district. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, uh, I'm okay. Sorry if I misspell. I'm very sorry if I misspell. You really have to forgive me. I, I think there is no question. I think she said she's okay. She, I think it was the same same question, I believe. So, uh, Adefolaki, um, Mrs. Adefolaki, I think your remark was very, very, very pertinent. Uh, it's okay now. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's good. It shows that, uh, in fact, it depends really on the target you, you, you choose. You know, if you had decided uh, to move 60% of the, of the, reproductive age uh, women in the district to this kind of contraception. Of course, the effort in terms of uh, advocacy and change would have been bigger, but we would have done uh, the calculation as uh, you suggested. So I, I really, you know, it's, it's just to show that this tool can really work in different um, ways, depending on the assumption uh, that you decide to take your target for your program. This is really what's uh, the beauty of this of those tools. They are very simple, they are very basic, but they can help you a lot in you know, doing the math when it comes to uh, program forecasting. So really thank you, thank you for, for, for those remarks. Um, they are really pertinent. Um, again, you know, we could have added also the 3.2% population growth. We've decided not to make it, but um you know this is really this is really where when you do forecasting when you do supply uh planning you 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 don't have to do it alone you know please do it with others because this kind of discussion we're having now this kind of exchanges is what really brings uh you know the the, the, the right uh the right approach and making sure that you take into consideration all the dimensions. So that's why, again, I send us back to, to the first uh, slide we worked on today, which is about information flows and information events. Where do we make sure, when can we make sure that all uh, stakeholders' views and information is gathered to make the right uh, decision? Uh, again, here, uh, the challenge in the exercise is that there is no consumption on this particular product because it's a new product. There is no supply data. So really, the main uh, information that we can access is demographic data because we've used demographic data here and services data at the health center. Um, thank you. Thank you for your participation. Moving on to third exercise, I think I will hand over uh, to uh, Sanjay, uh, who is playing also with the slides as I am doing it. Uh, so yeah, sorry Sanjay. about that. <laughs> you know, I thought right. you had already handed, handed it over I to know, me. I know, so. I know. Please, Sanjay. Okay. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, thanks Gilles. Um, uh, so just to, just to recap, um, let me also switch my video on. So just to recap, um, in the first exercise, we saw the calculation being done on consumption data. Um, I, I wanted to uh, also talk about uh, the issue of consumption data uh, at the beginning. Um, a lot of times um, in supply chains, uh, in, in health supply chains, we don't have the actual consumption data. The actual consumption data is what we get from a health facility. So which is like how much of product is dispensed to the patient or the user. But many times we don't actually have that data. So what we use is either we call supply data or a distribution data. So what is that data? That data is, let's say from the last store, let's say it's a district store or a you know LGA store in, in, in Nigeria, for example, the amount of products that has been distributed to the health facility. So they count that as consumption data, which although is not correct. If you are using supply or distribution data 
to create your forecast, there will be a high degree of error in that forecast. So always try to collect the real consumption data, which comes from the health facility or any service delivery point. Okay, so that will give you the actual scenario of the amount of product that has been consumed by patients or users. So that was our first exercise. In the second exercise, uh, since we did not have consumption data, we used, just like Gil mentioned, services data and also a bit of demographic data that how many women, reproductive age women are there in the district. So that is the demographic data. Uh, I see some people are unmuting themselves. Um, please, if you have questions, please, if you can write it in the chat or just wait for this exercise to finish uh, because then we will have a dedicated 15, 20 minutes for questions. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So um, we used services data as to how many women came to uh, a health center for oral contraceptives, so number of women. Uh, and we also use demographic data, how many women are there in the district. There is exercise three as well in your Excel workbooks, which we are not discussing today because it's a very long exercise. Uh, it takes a long time. Uh, it is using morbidity and demographic data, and it is also using the example of malaria products. So the step step by step calculation is provided in the Excel sheet. Please do refer to that. Uh, if you face any issues, any clarifications, you can put them on the WhatsApp group. Uh, and then we will, you know, get back to you uh, with the response. However, today, uh, since it is part of the weekly assignment, uh, we would like to go over exercise one again, which is ciprofloxacin tablet, uh, 100 uh, tablets in the secondary pack, essential medicines, uh, drug evolving fund. We need to uh, prepare the forecast for 12 months. But in this case, Instead of using average monthly consumption, we are going to be using the trend function in uh, Excel. Uh, Dr. Radicola, do you have a very specific question to this exercise? If not, uh, if it can wait, I don't know. Yes, I, I just, uh, well, I observed that when we were calculating for the first exercise using the proposal to the same, that we had the, we make it, there was, when we're calculating, uh, we make a division by 20. So I was trying to check out okay, for 24 year for 24 months. So I was trying to find out where do we have a 24 month, which we divided the, uh, we got the average consumption. Uh, it it was because the uh, the data was of twenty four months. So I will we can get back to that in the Q and A session at the end. Uh, I would like to focus more on uh, this uh, exercise, exercise number four, uh, and then later please pass this question. We will show you exactly in the sheet as well. Uh, uh, you know how twenty four was uh, it it came into being. Uh, but for now, let's focus on this one. Uh, so here, uh, so you just give me. Sanjay, we've lost you. Sanjay? Yeah, sorry, I'm back. Okay. Sorry. Um, so it's the same scenario of District X, of the same product, uh, same forecast period, everything is same. But instead of using average monthly consumption, we are going to be using an Excel function called trend. Okay. Now, again, uh, we can use much more um, you know, uh, sophisticated and advanced Excel functions. Uh, you know, if when our Excel uh, acumen is much higher, uh, you know, like we uh, we said in one of the previous slides that we can do regression analysis, uh, we can do time series analysis, but those are quite advanced uh, analysis to do on bigger data. However, just to give you a, a, a basic taste of how Excel functions can be used to prepare forecasts, it's a very simple scenario that we have prepared for you. Uh, now, if you see on screen here, which should be visible. So it's the same example. 
ciprofloxacin. Okay. Uh, exactly. Nothing has changed from there. Growth rate of 3.2% is there. Population of 200,000. Everything is same. Even the data which we had of 24 months, which actually was your question, Dr. Adikola, is the same data of 24 months that we had from January 2017 to December 2018. So we already have the data of 24 months. Here, just like we did it previously, we divide this data by 100 so that we get the data in packs. Now, we did not discuss it uh, too much earlier, uh, but when we're doing, when we're developing forecasts, it is always better to develop forecasts in the unit of measure of that product or product category. So in this case, the unit of measure is a secondary pack of 100 tablets. So this is the unit of in, in the consumption in unit of measure. UOM is unit of measure. Let me also write this down. Okay. Uh, so we divide this by 100. We get these many packs for 24 months. Now, this is here. We will use the trend function. But before we use the trend function, let me show you what is trend function. So we use this graph to explain to you what is trend function. So if you see this orange line, which goes up and down again and again for 24 months, this is our actual consumption data. Okay, so this is our consumption varying from one month to the next. If you see the gray line here, this is what we are trying to calculate. This is called a trend line. So one, when, we, when we create the trend line, you see it goes slightly upwards, okay? And in here, the last 12 months, this is what we are extrapolating. So when we extrapolate the trend line, we get our forecast, okay? So this is just to explain the mechanism that we're trying to use. We identify the trend line of this data. Then we extrapolate that trend line that extrapolation gives us the forecast of 12 months. Now, how do we do it using Excel function? So the Excel function of trend is written here. Uh, it, we need to find the known. So first of all, we need to figure out what is an X axis and Y axis. So in this case, uh, if we look at the formula here, so our Y axis is the number of products which has been dispensed. Our X axis is the time. Okay. So these are the these are the two things in the axis that we have on Y. If you even see here on this graph, on Y axis, we have the product number of product uh, unit, unit of measure. On X axis, we have the time. Okay. To make it easier, we have also created one more column just to write the period in numbers from 1 to 24 and then going beyond 36, the, the forecast period, okay? So the formula of trend is this. First, we write known Ys, then we write known Xs, then we need to find the new X, the which is the forecast period, the, the 12 months. So once we put this in formula, uh, we get the answer. So first, let's figure out the trend line. Okay. So use the trend function. Uh, instead of just using one cell, we select all the cells in that period. So like this. Okay. Uh, in this case, we will select everything at once because the trend line will automatically extrapolate and give us the answer of the next 12 months as well. Okay. So uh, we know, uh, okay, no, sorry. Here, I think we first do the trend line. And then here we go. Yes, okay. So let's do the trend line here. So this is our known wise E16 to E39. So if we go to the column E, this is our number of pack distance. So E16 to E39 is our pack dispensed. And then B16 to B39 is our period. Okay. So if I just show you live. So we do trend known wise. So we select all the Y. 
okay comma we select our period and then control shift enter okay so since i did not select the entire field it did not fill up but what happens if i select the entire field okay so i select the entire field then then known wise sorry 39 then we have known axis this are x axis and then we do control shift enter now you see all the cells got filled automatically in in our period where we have the data okay so now this is a trend line this is exactly the line that you see here the this gray line okay so now let us extrapolate from here so now this is the part where we need the forecast for this 12 month now to do this again the same process trend we know the known wise of the past 24 months we select that we know our known axis the period and the new x the new x is here okay and then again we do control shift enter so the entire thing gets plotted here so how do we know how many packs we need for one year we do simply do the sum of the highlighted rows highlighted cells and we get this okay now if we do uh, i guess if we do round up Okay, so round rounding up gets to one one double two. Now, if we compare this with the average monthly consumption that we, you know, even including the uh, assumption of three point two percent, it was much lower. It was one one zero four. So, with average monthly consumption, we got a different result. With trend line analysis, we got a different result. Okay. Now, this trend line is only focusing on the past 24 months so if you want you can also take an assumption here of 3.2 percent okay but that is totally subjected to whoever is doing this exercise whoever uh, looks at the data and determines that whether we need to add the assumption or not because anyways it's an assumption we don't really know okay so it's totally up to the team who's doing this exercise to add the assumption of 3.2 percent or not but whichever way the idea is this we create our trend line we extrapolate it the extrapolation gives us the forecast of that period okay so let me go back to the slide very quickly yeah so here we have the opportunity for the q a so let me quickly go back to the sheet as well let's see if there are any uh, how do we get the trend function okay so the trend function on excel like i showed you it's very simple you write trend you get the trend function okay so here if i click on trend you see on the help it will appear it's this coming i hope it is visible yeah okay so it already came so here is the uh, definition of trend function directly by Microsoft Excel. So you can, you know, type that up on Google as well. It will give you the entire trend function, okay? But if I need to just simply show you the syntax of trend, uh, I can also show it from here. So this is the syntax of trend, known Y's, known X's, new X's, and if there is a constant or a logical constant that you want wants to use. From a mathematical equation, the formula is this y is equal to mx plus b so please don't ask me the mathematical explanation i'm not a statistical or mathematical expert but that is the formula i know my friends 
to do the statistics they have been using to plot the graph, figuring out the slope, uh, and then based on that, uh, figuring out and extrapolating the numbers. Okay. Um, any other question? Can you go over this again? Okay, we can go over this again. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, there was a question from Dr. Samuel. Yeah. Dr. Samuel, we use 24 here. Let me just thing, just just one thing quickly uh, on the formula. Uh, it's really something which is within Excel, uh, so it's something you need to get used uh, to practice to use, but it's not something you have to design. Okay, it's really something. It's a facility. You go, you click, you choose a function, and it will create automatically a formula, an algorithm that will allow you to respond to specific need. So really, the, you know, when I was saying earlier, you need to be trained on Excel on the formula is really about which formula you need in which situation. That's really the thing. You know? Because once you know all the formula which are available, there is a long list of formula, you will most of the time find what you need. Whether it is to classify data, whether it is to organize data from the top to the level, uh, or to find correspondence between different lists of organizations, or to find the rotation among product, anything you need, you'll find it in those formula. The only thing you need is to understand which formula is used for which purpose. And that's part of the training. That's what you will learn from the training. Because once you know that, to use the formula is very simple. They are available right on it's like off the shelf product you don't need to to to, to worry about it yeah. thanks Jill. uh very quickly going back to dr samuel's question um, um you know so the reason why we use 24 is because the period of the data which was available to us was of 24 months so to calculate average monthly consumption which we uh you know added the quantities of 24 months and then divided by 24 so that's your answer why we use 24. um there was another request of going through this all over again the trend one uh is there any other question with respect to trend analysis or the other um uh, you know exercises we went through uh, i will go through the trend analysis once again uh, but if you have any logical questions or anything with, with respect to logic of how and why we did this, uh, please ask. Uh, anyways, I'm going through the exercise once again. Um, so like I said, in this case, uh, the situation is same as our exercise one, forecast one, the same product, the same 24 months data. But in this case, we're not calculating average monthly consumption. We are simply using the trend function which is already there in Microsoft Excel. The logic is this. As we plot the consumption data on a chart, you see the ups and downs. If you try to plot the trend line, the trend line, trend line is in gray. So if we extrapolate this trend line, that gives you the forecast. So the logical uh, explanation is only this, that we are extrapolating the trend line to identify or to develop our forecast of 12 months. Now, how we do that? We use this function called trend. So the function of trend is dependent on two sets of data. What is on the y-axis and what is on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have the product quantity, the number of products which are dispensed every month. On the x-axis, we have the period monthly period okay so the way we calculate the trend line for 24 months is we select the entire 24 cells at once we use the formula trend known wise so on y we have the number of products which are dispensed january to december the known x is the period which is month one to month 24 now here, instead of just closing the bracket and pressing enter, we need to press control, shift, and then enter. If we do that, the entire selection that, you know, the selection of 24 cells, it will get filled automatically because it's a trend line, okay? Now to find the missing value, so this is the forecast period here, the next 12 months. Okay, so now this is the extrapolation of the same trend line which is coming from above. 
So we do the same thing again. Then, sorry, we need to select everything. Select all the 12 months. Rent, known wise, same again with the same formula. Known wise, known excess. And now we do one more thing is the new X, the new period for which we need to extrapolate. So we add that control shift enter. So everything gets plotted. Okay. So as you see here, the trend line. 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. So it's the same trend line which is going slightly in the upward direction. So it is already telling you that there will be more product required in the subsequent 12 months than what was required in the previous 12 months. So that's why I said, now in this case, we did here, we are not adding the assumption of 3.2%, but you still can add it. You know, maybe you do much more detailed analysis and you and you see that that 3.2% assumption is still valid in this case. And then you add it here. Okay, and it's totally the call of the team who's using uh, this methodology. Add this assumption or not. We have not added it just for the sake that, you know, we, we, we believe that this is already, uh, you know, uh, kind of accounting for that uh, accounting for that line okay so that's very simply the the trend function uh, you will see uh, in what scenarios do we use the trend function for forecasting that's a very good question um you can there are various this was you know part of a time series or extrapolation model that we showed you this is the simplest example that we can show you uh, there are multiple time series models that you can use. Uh, they are called moving averages. You can do three months moving averages. You can do six months moving averages. There are the multiple ways you do that. And then going, you can do uh, much more advanced uh, regression analysis. Functions, again, uh, is much better to use when you have uh, a large number of data, data from a large period. So, for example, here we have 24 months uh, period of data. The reason why I'm saying this is because uh, if you apply trend analysis to a small period, it may not factor in any seasonality or any uh, aberration that may be there in the data. Now, if you see here the data carefully, uh, there are two times in a month, like in this period and then again in this period, uh, there is some spike which is being observed. Suddenly, the number of tablets go above 10,000. Uh, so, uh, if you keep on looking at this data, if even if you have 48 months of data, your trend analysis will be even more accurate. So, the more number of months of data you have, your trend analysis will be much more accurate. Uh, you should not use trend analysis when you have three or at the most six months of data. Your trend trend line will be very uh, you know, it will not be a good representation of your data. Okay. Uh, you sh also should not use trend analysis if you are seeing very high seasonality factor. In that case, there is another formula that we use where seasonality, we factor in seasonality as well. I don't remember the formula now, but I will get back to you on WhatsApp directly on the group that there are other formulas that you can use. In the same way, uh, Excel also has a formula called forecast, by the way. So if, yeah, exactly. So this is, so this is the formula that I was talking about. So if you see here, so uh, forecast formula, including seasonality, uh, it's a long formula, but you can also figure it out from Excel itself. Uh, so these are other formulas that you can use uh, directly on Excel. Um, and then there are much more. You know, so, like I said, moving averages, regression analysis. So, these are all different methods depending on the type of data you got. Okay. Uh, but the most important thing here is you should have a long range of data to do all this. If you only have three, six months of data, that's really not enough to do any Excel analysis. Okay. For any meaningful analysis in Excel, always try to get a long range of data for every product. Okay. Uh, there is a new program that we are developing. Uh, 
focusing on forecasting and supply planning where we are also building templates uh, where you know you can put in categories of products in the template and the template will give you forecast so we are still working on that we are hoping to launch that program by end of this year that program itself is of six to eight weeks so what we are showing you here is just the tip of the iceberg this is just a very basic very basic idea of uh, concepts that are being used to prepare forecasts but to actually to be able to learn forecasting to any measure you should be willing to spend a minimum of six to eight weeks just to go over all different types of data, different types of analysis, um, the logic behind it, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so is there any other question on the exercises that we've gone through? Otherwise, I will quickly take you to one last thing, which is, which was the step four of, uh, so if I quickly go back, so if you see here, the step number four is monitoring and uh, you know evaluating forecasts. So here we talk about forecast accuracy. So okay, there was a poll as well, but I think it's okay. We'll do the poll later. Uh, let's talk about forecast accuracy very quickly because it's very important and most times. Um, these uh, accuracy uh, analysis are either not done, forgotten, uh, or done in a very poor way. Okay, so like Gilles was saying, forecasts, developing forecasts are very difficult, and forecasts are hardly accurate. Uh, there was a study I was uh, reviewing last year uh, when I was uh, doing uh, uh, you know consultancy in Ethiopia. Uh, so it was published by the PSM program, the GHSC PSM program uh, in Ethiopia, uh, which said that for all program categories where GHSC PSM uh, developed forecasts and you know procured the products, on average the forecast accuracy was twenty four percent, which is very less. Okay, it was slightly higher in the case of vaccines. Or I believe it was close to some mid forties, uh, but for many products it was much less. You know, uh, also uh, accuracies can all uh, go down the drain when an event like COVID or any other epidemic happens. So, for example, as you see on screen, when everyone did their forecast, developed their forecast for gloves in 2019, no one knew that COVID was coming. So, you can see how the demand of gloves it shot up maybe thousand or a million times globally just because of a pandemic and no one knew. So forecasts are never accurate uh, for any product category. I mean, even if if, if you can achieve close to 60% of accuracy, then you are literally in the highest league of, uh, you know, organizations or teams who are developing on managing forecasts. Even in developed countries in USA or UK or Europe, majority of even private sector uh, there was a study by deloitte where it said for fmcg the accuracy of forecasts uh, in europe were about four percent in 2022 four percent that's nothing <laughs> so forecasts are never accurate but still we do this exercise just so that we can keep on improving year on year so how do we do that so there are three different measures that we use one is called mean absolute deviation the other is called mean squared error and the third is called mean absolute percentage deviation so what we try to do is try to understand a deviation in our actual data from the forecast and we keep on doing this exercise over and over again so that eventually we get a factor of uh, error which we can add to our forecast so that factor can be positive or negative. It depends on what is happening year on year basis. Okay. So what is mean absolute deviation? It, I mean, it's called sum of simple mistakes. It simply means uh, the accuracy of forecast by averaging the alleged error. Uh, it simply means the uh, forecast when you subtract the actual from the forecast and give you a number. And that number is your mean absolute deviation. 
sometimes we need to understand where the deviation is very high so what we do is we do the squaring of those deviation and that is what is called mean squared error so if you see the second line it says this technique is helpful to understand those scenario where the error rate was high and then we find cause for that and we will see in the exercise as well mean absolute percent deviation is simply the mean absolute deviation presented in a percentage format so if you see the example given here so if you tell your manager that we were off by 3000 tablets it will not really make sense because we don't know 3000 tablets out of what but if we say 4% we were off by 4% or our error was 4% then it gives you a very it, it simply gives you an idea that okay 4% out of whatever you know so we understand much more clearly when it is depicted in percentages so that is what mean absolute percentage deviation is in most guidelines in most policies uh, you will see mape being mentioned as a uh, key performance indicator for forecasts and this is what it is okay so how do you get to mape you first uh, calculate your mad mean absolute deviation so now let's see how it is done so this is the sheet for forecast accuracy so again we have taken the same example of ciprofloxacin so the forecast one was developed using average monthly consumption okay so if you remember forecast one so this was our forecast of 12 months okay so we just divide that by 12 so every month we get 92 okay uh, i think it's slightly off so let me try to do it again so 1104 right by 12 yeah okay Okay. Yeah, so it was one one zero four. Okay. Uh, so that is forecast one. Then we also calculated the forecast using trend analysis. So now we have plotted it here. This is the forecast from the trend analysis, which eventually came to one one double two. So now we already had these numbers month wise from forecast four. So we already had these numbers here month wise. So we copied them and we have pasted them here just to give you two different forecasts okay now this is the actual consumption that happened for that year okay again this data is fictional this is just for the purpose of explaining you how it works so this is the actual consumption per month so now here if you see these are the three indicators that we discussed mad msc and ape mean absolute deviation mean squared error and mean absolute percentage error so we will first calculate all these indicators for the forecast developed using amc then using the trend analysis so mad so we use a function called abs absolute so if we don't use the function absolute our numbers can go in negatives that won't be very helpful so we want to understand the absolute deviation doesn't matter in negative or positive but the absolute one so we use this function abs and then the consumption minus the forecast so that gives you the mean absolute deviation for that month then we calculate the mean the deviation for all these months the 12 months and then we average the entire period out so 5.92 becomes the mean of this period so it can be called as the mean absolute deviation for this period of forecast so when we used amc our mean absolute deviation was 5.92 similarly to do the mean squared error first of all we find the error in its squared format so four the square of four is 16 the square of three is nine uh, now if you see here this is the biggest error 169 okay this is the biggest error in the series so that's that's what we wanted to say 13 may not look a very large number but to show in percentages or in mean squared error shows us exactly how big that error is 
So if we compare 169 by 16, then we already know that 169 is a very big error in this series. Okay. Now percentage is very simple. Uh, this is the error for the absolute error. We divide this by the actual consumption. Okay. So if I divide this number by the actual consumption and take the percentage of it, it will come to 5%. So 5% error was there in the first month, then 3%, then 6%. Fortunately, there was 0% error or maybe less than one. No, but it was, yeah, zero, it's 0% zero error for some reason. Okay. And then in this month, the highest error, 12%. Okay. Uh, then if we do the mean or the average of this entire series, we get the overall mean absolute percentage error of this forecast of this series, which is 6.19. So we just did the average of this entire series. Okay. So this is a simple average formula, average of the series. Okay. Similarly, we get the mean absolute deviation for trend, mean squared error for trend, and mean absolute percentage error for trend. Just for the sake of this exercise, the error rate for the trend analysis in this case is slightly lower than the error rate of the uh, forecast developed using AMC. But this is just hypothetical for the sake of this exercise. So if you have different forecasts, if you have prepared different forecasts for the same product, and then you want to analyze them, you can figure out which forecast was more correct Okay, using these uh, metrics of MAD, MSE, and MAPP. Okay. So this is a simple, uh, and this is done like this only. So there is no other way to do it. So you can simply use this format as well. You just need to add your own forecasts, add your own consumption, uh, figure out the monthly error, month, uh, and then average them out for any series that you're looking at. This is how it is done. So there is no other way it is done. It is as simple as this. But the, the key here is that it has to be done regularly. You need to do this analysis every six months. So every six months, when you get the consumption data, plot it against your forecast. And then you see what is your error. If you keep doing this over and over again, eventually there is a way to find out your average error in any forecast. So let's say your error is 10%, you know, minus or plus. So then when you're creating your forecast, you know you need to also add a factor of error into your forecast. Okay. So I think there is a question. Yes, uh, Zakaria, in this case, like I said, the trend analysis looks to be a bit more accurate than the AMC uh, as suggested by the MAPP. Okay. But this is hypothetical again. I mean, we are not saying that uh, trend will always be accurate than AMC. There may be, any, there may be a case where a simple average monthly consumption uh, formula is easier and also accurate. Okay. Uh, this is just for the sake of this exercise. Uh, if I change the number slightly here, <laughs> then AMC will start to show, uh, you know, having less data. So this is entirely hypothetical, like it is mentioned here. This data is fictional. Okay. So this is how we uh, figure out errors. Yes. You're very right, Farm uh, on on your cam. This is a bit um, difficult to understand in the first go. Uh, so please, uh, you have to go through these sheets. You have to go through the lessons of module four. So when you go through the lessons of module four, you all this will be covered in module four as well. So module four will give you all the theoretical aspects, and then you can use these sheets and the presentation that we have already sent you to practice okay you can also find some data from your own uh, workplace from the health facilities or any warehouse try to plot them in the same way and then try to uh, use the formulas that we have given you uh, this way you will be able to practice and get more familiarized with these concepts of forecasting many times in our sector we are given some tools where we just input the numbers and then the tool, they give us the answer. But then we don't know if the tool gave us the right answer or not, because we don't know the logic behind it. So our effort here 
is to tell you what is the logic behind it. Okay, so our entire effort is for you to understand the logic of forecasting. And then you can use any tool because any which way is, uh, uh, it is good to use tool, but you should know the logic behind forecast. Okay. Uh, so let me quickly go back to the slides to see if anything is left. No, not really. Uh, so if you have any questions, any clarifications, uh, please you can ask them. Um, there is a there is a poll I think at the very end. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, feedback of this class. But before that, let me quickly ask uh, Jill for any uh, final thoughts about forecasting or any questions that you may have. I think we've touched on uh, on a lot of things uh, in this session, and I can understand that after two hours, uh, you know, ending up with uh, you know all those uh, those calculations and things like that may seems a bit uh, uh, complicated, and uh, yeah, you may feel you you're losing a bit uh, the sense. But really, all these uh, are tools that needs to be practiced, as uh, as Sanjay said. Uh, there are tools uh, maybe that uh, you will never use. Uh, as they are, but uh, they will uh, help you sometimes to to see the rational behind some of uh, the um, uh, automated tool that can be used. Huh? Because uh, when we talk about algorithms which are used in uh, off-the-shelf uh, tools, you know, like forecasting tools, uh, uh, forecasting forecasting stuff software, uh, demand planning software, all those kind of things. Behind that, uh, you have some uh, algorithm, which are those which are used uh, here. So algorithm is uh, are one source of uh, forecasting tool, uh, but they have to be complemented with, um, uh, you know, um, exchange uh, analysis and uh, ideally uh, collective analysis. So work that can be done um, together, then uh, you identify the, the data, you take your assumption, you put them in your system, whether the Excel file or uh, the forecasting software that you're using in your organization, and you can uh, progress with this. Again, uh, not all of you will use those tools, but uh, all of you need to know uh, what is in the engine of the tools uh, you're using and the process you're going through. Um, I think one, one key thing is, again, uh, supply chains are collaborative. So all those tools, everything we learn here is about uh, improving the collaboration uh, with other stakeholders within the health system and particularly within the health supply chain. Yeah, thanks, Jill. Uh, I've launched the poll about the feedback of today's session. Uh, it might sound a bit heavy, um, uh, and it was designed in a way so that we can give you some concepts and logics of forecasting. Uh, there are not many programs where uh, you know they give you uh, you know very detailed oriented Excel uh, analysis to do. So that's why our effort was to create all this and share with our students so that at least uh, you get to know how forecasting uh, is done at the back end. What is the logic? What are some simple ways of doing it? Uh, but for some of you, it may sound or it may look very heavy. Uh, it may be a bit overwhelming. Uh, so please go through them uh, a few times uh, so that you can get a bit more familiarized uh, with these tools. Okay. Um, the next session, which is the next Saturday, uh, will be on uh, strategic procurement uh, and there will be a, a, a group assignment as well. So the assignment for the next group is actually a group assignment, which will be done in the next class. So if you miss the class, and I mean, we'll also write that in the WhatsApp group. So if you write, if you miss the class, then it will be very difficult for you to uh, do that assignment because it's a group assignment. It has to be done in the group. So make sure you don't miss the class. There will be again, just like the previous session, there will be breakout groups created. You will be given this scenario. You will have to uh, you know, prepare PowerPoint on that. 
but you have to discuss in the groups. Okay. So thank you very much for attending today's class. Uh, we have been monitoring the progress of everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Priyanka will share the progress report of this week uh, on Monday or Tuesday. Um, so if you are not uh, by this time, if you have not completed module four, then you are a bit behind. So you may need to pick up your pace. Um, and the next week is dedicated on procurement, which will then combine all the various discussions that we have had so far. And then after procurement, the last uh, week or uh, last two weeks, we will focus on warehousing, inventory management, transportation, last mile. And then there is a guest speaker uh, who's going to present uh, how uh, outsourcing has worked really well in the HIV AIDS program of India. Uh, so you should also not miss that session uh, because uh, there is no literature currently being uh, written for that program. And he has very graciously accepted our invitation to come and speak and provide that uh, information firsthand to all of you. With that, uh, I, I hope all of you will have a great weekend. Uh, sincere thanks to Yil to uh, come and talk to us as well and uh, sharing his experience from the private sector and the humanitarian sector. Um, if you have any questions, please, you can write it on the WhatsApp group, reach out to Priyanka or myself uh, over emails. Um, and of course, uh, I see a lot of you are discussing already uh, on Hive uh, on various questions, various issues. So that's great. Uh, I wish you all the best um, and see you next week. All right. So bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.